If you ever need to create a movement that needs to repeat itself, such as a blinking cursor or some type of motion that has the same repetitive pattern, then I hope this video can help you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. To get started, the first thing we're going to do is to bring Fusion Composition Clip into the timeline. And for the sake of this video, I'm actually going to turn it into a 10 second clip. So once that is done, let's take it to the Fusion page. And once we're on the Fusion page, the first thing uh, we're going to do is to connect the background node to Media Out 1. And here the idea is just to set up the cursor. And then I'm going to play with the level parameter there uh, to set up our first blink. So now as you see that our first blink has been set up, now we just need this movement to repeat itself throughout the rest of this video, which could take a very long time to do if we were to do it manually, especially considering the duration of this video. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is to go to Spline Editor, select this parameter, and now we're going to select all the keyframes that we have used to set up our, our first blink here right click and then go to set loop and then select loop. So now what you will notice is that this movement has been repeated um, throughout this entire video clip. As a matter of fact, it has been repeated infinitely um, throughout this entire clip. So now once that is done, let's actually have a look at what this looks like. So now as you see guys, the uh, cursor is constantly blinking and, and it's this movement has been successfully repeated. This is exactly the effect that we're looking for. All right, so now another thing about this method is that if let's say you want to change the interpolation of the original movement or the original blink in this case, now you see that all the other copies uh, are also uh, getting this same effect. So this is a great advantage of using this method is if you want to change the interpolation uh, of the original uh, movement, all the other movement will get the same effect. So this is very easy, very easy to apply. Okay, lastly, if you want to remove um, uh, all the looped movements, all you need to do is to come to the original one and then uh, go to set loop, deselect uh, loop. And then now all the other uh, mo movement, all the other copies are removed from this video clip. Now, if you want to be more specific about how many times you want the movement to be looped, now there is an alternative method. So all we need to do is to select all the keyframes. Once again, right click. Now, instead of go to set loop, we're going to duplicate and then select loop. Now it's going to ask you how many times you want it to be looped. So we're going to enter two. Now in total, we're going to have three blinks now. So this is great because now this allows you to uh, choose exactly how many times you want the movement um, to be looped. But one thing about this method is that it doesn't have the same advantage that the other has, which is if you change the interpolation uh, of the original um, blink of the original movement, as you see that all the other movement doesn't get that same treatment. So uh, for all the other looped movements, uh, they can be individually adjusted for their interpolation. Lastly, we can copy and paste the keyframes to repeat the movement. And to do that, we just need to select all the keyframes once again, we right click, uh, we can select copy points, or we can simply use keyboard shortcut command C. And once we copy the value, now we need to deselect all the points and then move our playhead to where we want this to be pasted. And then simply hit command V. Now this will paste that same movement. And what's great about this method, as you can see, is that we can not only choose how many times we want it to be repeated, but we can also choose exactly where we want this movement to be pasted. So you have absolute control over how this movement, uh, how this movement is going to look. Now, of course, one disadvantage of this method, as you see now, if we change the interpolation of the original uh, blink, it's not going to get applied to all the others. So either we have to set the interpolation from the get go, or we need to individually adjust all the other copies. Alright guys, so in our second example here, I'm going to go ahead and set up the motion now, uh, which is uh, going to be a skinny bar that scrolls across the screen uh, from left uh, to right. So now let's go ahead and uh, have a look. Okay, so that's fine. That's great. So now we just need to repeat it. 
Now I'm going to use copy and paste to do this because I want to illustrate a potential problem that you may run into if you use copy and paste. And then when I paste it, what I want to do is to make sure that there are some frames in between each movement. So rather than the movement right next to each other, I want to have some frames in between. OK, so let's go ahead and finish that up. So once again, I want to make sure I move uh, uh, some frames over to the right and then uh, paste the value. Now, if we go ahead and look at the finished effect, what you will notice all of a sudden is that our bar starts to scrolling backwards, and that's definitely not what we want. And the problem lies in between movements. So what we need to do is to select the keyframes that are in between the movements, and then we're going to right click. And then in the menu, we're going to select either step in or step out. So what do they look like? Okay, let's go ahead and select step in for now. So what you will notice is that this will just hold that last frame there until the very last second, and then we'll, we'll revert back to the beginning. So this is what we're looking for. It will work perfectly. Now, how about step out? Okay, so let's take a step back. Let's go ahead, and instead of choosing stepping, we're going to choose a step out now. So let's see what that looks like. See, what this will do is that it will actually revert it back right away, and then it will just hold at that frame until the next movement. So either one will get the job done. Um, so for this case here, we're going to use just stepping. So now let's go ahead and have a look at the finished effect. So what you will guys notice is that it's no longer scrolling backwards. So this is exactly the effect that, uh, that we're looking for. And the great thing about this is that once we made the change, now if we copy this new keyframes and we paste it again, you see that they will get this step in or step out that you just made. So you don't have to worry about any new paste values, uh, uh, not getting the step in or step out, and you have to manually change that uh, again and again. So you see that all these motions are getting that same effect and, it work, and they work perfectly. Now, lastly, I want to talk about how, you know, we said before interpolation uh, doesn't apply to all the motions. Um, so what you need to do is to set it up uh, initially. So here I'm going to set it up like this. I think this will work a little bit better for this. So now uh, once this is done, what we need to do is to then uh, copy and paste this uh, again and then make sure that we change the keyframes in between these movements to either stepping uh, to or step out so we don't get any interpolation and then we'll copy the new movement and then paste it again uh, so now this will now you, if we look at the finished effect you'll see that this gets not only uh, the consistent interpolation uh, in all the move motions but also we don't have to worry about the bar scrolling back all right guys i hope this helps and i'll see you next time <music>